Jeremy Weiss here. We're live at IRCE, and I'm here with Sina, and he is the founder of Duoplane. And I want you to tell people what you do. Sure. So we run a uh, software platform that connects to merchants' shopping carts to help them manage their distributed fulfillment. So that's uh, merchants who typically don't hold their own inventory. They either drop ship or they work with outside warehouses, 3PLs, in order to fulfill their, their um, orders. So, you know, we were talking a little bit about different use cases for it. What are some of those? So, I mean, typical use case is a um, is a, a merchant who um, they might sell a very wide range of products coming from lots of different vendors, or they might have a combination uh, model where they they might fulfill some of their items from a warehouse and some from outside vendors, and um, and so they they need us to help them route orders, split them up, send them in different formats to different vendors. Um, so yeah, so that's typical. And then we have we have a lot of clients also, interestingly enough, who aren't even really e-commerce merchants but have a uh, e-commerce portal portion of their business, so they don't want to be at all involved in the fulfillment piece of things, so they want they have us help them work with their outside partners to help them fulfill, um, fulfill their orders. So uh, a favorite story from someone navigating this process? Sure. So um, we work with uh, lots of different types of uh, merchants, I'd say. Um, we work with one company in particular that... Um, uh, they actually um, sell uh, dorm furniture, so bedding, accessories, um, uh, decorations, and things like that. And it's a huge range of products. So, and a lot of them are very niche type products. They might sell one or two of per year. And so they use a dropship model to help them really expand their catalog and, um, and offer a wide range of products. And then they also have, for their fast-selling products, they have quick ship that they, sh they ship out of a third party warehouse. And so we help them integrate with their warehouse and then we help them integrate with their, um, uh, um, with all their drop ship suppliers. But it's just really interesting because the wide range of things they sell and they, and they can change, you know, their, their, their makeup of their, um, uh, of their uh, merchandise very, very quickly because they are using this distributed model. You probably see, since you touch a lot of different uh, e-commerce businesses, I'd love for you to, to talk about some of the mistakes you see people making. Sure. Um, hmm, interesting. So I'd say um, probably one of the mistakes I see, because we're also often involved in kind of a, um, the replatforming stages of companies when they're choosing new platforms. Um, I think overthinking things tend to be something that, that we see companies do, especially when they're moving from like a legacy homegrown system to maybe to an off the shelf like hosted solution. Um, everything now is, can be prototyped quickly where you can you know, really sort of test things out and try a lot of different solutions and, and plug different pieces into to them, to them, to each other. And so my piece of advice for, um, for anyone doing that is, is just experiment and try and prototype um, and don't overthink things and come up with like a big solution uh, sorry, a big requirements list. Um, uh, so that's that's definitely one thing that that I've seen. Uh, but in general, you know, just you know, get out there, try things. Don't sort of you know, especially for the aspiring entrepreneur, don't overthink um, whether it's going to work or, or or whether you should get into it. Just you know, do it and and experiment and 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 you know, repeat you know, rinse and repeat type thing. People always like to hear of different softwares and platforms. What are some of the ones that you have found are most popular among your customers? So definitely the the, the big names that you often hear, Shopify, BigCommerce, um, Magento, are the platforms that we tend to work the most with. They're the easiest to get started with, um, and they are robust and scalable, and 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 so those are definitely the the platforms um, that we see. Uh, and, and certainly, for anyone kind of considering getting an e-commerce or replatforming, I never would suggest writing your own so shopping cart. I actually still see that. Really? Um, that I would add that to the mistakes that, that um, you know people bringing their their sort of old IT with them. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you know, the Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento are sort of the the, 
the main ones that we see. I mean, nothing against the other ones. We just you know haven't seen as much right. traffic on on the other platforms. And what about other softwares or apps that they're using? Um, I, I don't have as much visibility into the, into those. Uh, to be totally honest with you, in terms of the marketing, you know, marketing apps and, and things like that. Um, what do you guys use internally? Internally, um, well, I mean, we use things. I mean, we use. Um, uh, I mean, Zendesk for our you know help desk. Um, we use. Um, I'm trying to think what else we use. I actually don't Slack. know all. We do use Slack internally. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I love Slack. Everyone loves Slack. Um, we use Uber Conference for our, you know, conferencing. We do a lot of demos, a lot of conferences. That's that's been one of our favorites. Um, so, um, how did you get started in this? So, I used to actually run an e-commerce retailer. I uh, co-founded a, a company in the modern furniture space back in oh. 2003, um, and our entire model there was was drop shipping. So we we sold. You don't uh, want to hold a ton of inventory of huge furniture, right? And it, well, so part of it was furniture, but part, part of it also was we were selling sort of modern accessories from lots of independent designers. So the kind of stuff you might see in in a in a boutique in New York or L.A. Um, we were trying to make available to kind of a more of a mass market. And those were very long tail type things where we might sell one or two of them over the course of a year. So we had developed some processes and we, I don't think a lot of people even use the term drop shipping back then, but we sort of had a lot of uh, relationships and, and ship things directly. And so this company actually came directly out of that. So I was, I kind of got, you know, stuck, I guess, with all the back end operations part of things. While my Someone partner. makes a sale and then all the hamsters are, are running in the background to make it exactly. make it happen. Yeah, and so that was we developed all this software and processes for for that, and so that's actually and I learned to code through that whole process and 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 kind of learned all the best practices around fulfillment, and so that's we sold that company in 2011, and so I found a duo plane shortly after that. So why furniture? For that originally come. Yeah. So we it, I'm I'm a engineer by background, sort of product design. So it makes even less. Sense. No, I'm just I want, we wanted to actually make furniture. You know, we actually got oh. into the world of we wanted to sort of IKEA. build I, basically a higher level IKEA. It took us probably a few months to realize that would have been a horrible business, and we would have been stuck with containers. I mean, we just we we saw so many companies get into that and, and not do that well. But we also met a lot of companies who needed distribution, and so we. Um, almost by accident fell into being a retailer because we said, hey, we can start selling all this, all this stuff that these companies were meeting. And that's actually how we got into, got into it. We originally wanted to be the designer, but we, we thought there was more opportunity in being kind of a distributor retailer. Yeah. So uh, what's some of the challenges of Duoplan? As a company? Yeah. Um, well, probably the biggest thing is we bootstrap, or I bootstrap the company. Um, so uh, that is, I'd say, slowed growth. But um, I very much did that kind of on purpose. Yeah. Um, so you know, I've got the benefit of kind of slower growth. But I think you know, struggling a little bit to kind of um, you know, the the vision is much bigger than what we can do at any one point. Um, and so you know, right now I'm definitely trying to hire, um, build the team, build more of kind of that management layer that, that, um, that I couldn't build on day one. Um, but that's probably the, big, the biggest thing um, is, uh, is, is sort of right now building kind of the internals. And you know, I'm in the Bay Area where everything is expensive, real estate's expensive, people are expensive. expensive. So, um, so that's been definitely a challenge. But I am actually building the company remotely, so trying to keep it um, uh, keep those challenges at bay a little bit by taking advantage of all the talent that's you know sort of around the country, around the world. So who should be using Duoplan? That isn't. Um, well, really, anyone. Someone at IRC right now? Yeah, I mean, all these people. No, I mean, basically, it's it's anyone. So right now, the the, the typical customer are people who are uh, who are drop shipping or or integrating with a 3PL third third party warehouse. Um, and so that's kind of who we're working with right now are people who already know that they need the product. I mean, I personally am a big fan of everyone, kind of all retailers shedding their inventory and at least working you know, with professional warehouses and 3PLs. And so I think eventually the whole world will sort of go toward you know, the merchant being a marketing merchandising machine and all the back end processes being handled by people who are more expert in that. And so that's kind of, that's our thesis at least, is that, um, that that's, that's where retail is going. What about mistakes in logistics, right? What are you seeing? Because you mentioned something that people shouldn't be warehousing their own stuff. Yeah. What are you seeing on that front? 
I think d trying to do it yourself is a mistake and, and can become a horror story. Um, I mean, I even look back in our own experience at my old company. Um, we, we, we started warehousing things by accident because we would get returns back. And, and they first showed up in my apartment. And then, then we actually rented an office, you know, expensive office space in San Francisco to warehouse the stuff. And so eventually we did move it to a 3PL in, in Virginia. Um, but, you know, the, the nightmare of actually managing it yourself can be really overwhelming, even at a small scale. So um, I think that, you know, that's, that's difficult. And, uh, and, you know, there are also nightmares, frankly, when you do even outsource it, working with the wrong 3PL, um, someone who doesn't want to take on the type of product you're, you're selling or doesn't want to deal with the returns or you need gift, you know, gift um, uh, packaging and they say they can do it but they've never really done it before. So I think really vetting your, your 3PL if you're going to outsource it or with a drop shipper really vetting that they've done this before and they can and they can actually provide that high level of, of service to your, your end customer is really important. So what are some of the best practices if someone's looking for a good 3PL? So certainly someone who can integrate with you seamlessly. I mean you're going to need, the, you need the outside company whether it's a drop shipper or a 3PL to essentially be part of your system. So you need to have full visibility in the inventory, you need to have full visibility into where your orders are, making sure they, they ship out immediately. And so those are things you can maybe ask early on, but but I'd say in, in the spirit of prototyping, you know, send a few test packages through them, make sure that everything, you know, arrives exactly in a timely manner. You have full visibility um, into where the order is at any point. Um, so that's definitely one thing is, is sort of systems integration and visibility. And I think the other thing is just um, making sure that they have that end customer focus. Um, again, a lot of times the dropship vendors and the 3PLs, they're very ops focused um, and they want to, um, they don't necessarily think about, you know, what is that end customer either unboxing going to feel like or, um, or um, if something's damaged, you know, how fast we can get it um, fixed. And so I think making sure they have that same level of um, understanding that it's a mutual end customer is really important. That's just more of a philosophical thing to kind of, you know, vet with them. What's uh, been a proud moment for you in the journey? You've been e -commer at this e-commerce thing for a while. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, I mean, founding Duoplane and, and actually seeing it work has been um, gratifying. I mean, I think every time I get on a, a, a call with a customer, I meet a customer, and they express, you know, gratitude that that either they wouldn't be in business if it weren't for Duoplane, or we make their life so much easier. I mean, that's proud. I mean, it's, and it's and it's not always the CEO. Sometimes it's the operations manager that used to do things by hand, and he or she tells us that, you know, their life is completely different. That they are now doing sort of higher level things that, that they enjoy doing. And I think that's, all, that's always a proud moment is knowing that we're helping someone kind of get away from the mundane and, you know, and reduce their mistakes and just make them, you know, help them do their job better. We hear that a lot and it's always gratifying to hear. Are there cases where they don't realize there is a solution that they're doing manually or do most people know there is something out there that will help them? No, I, I mean, I think awareness is, you mentioned one of our challenges. I mean, awareness is definitely a challenge. I mean, I think um, there are uh, a lot of a lot of our clients actually have told us, like, where were you guys? We looked for you and, and we couldn't find you. So, um, and, and so I, I think there are a lot of people who don't realize there are solutions for this and they are doing it manually. They're building their own uh, processes. Um, and so we, we are definitely trying to build awareness, um, you know, especially with partners who are kind of helping to create these solutions. But yeah, there's a lot of people out there who are just doing things by hand and, and don't realize there's a better way of, of managing their, their back end. Well, thanks for sharing some of that. Where can people find you online? Where should we point them towards? So duoplane.com is our website and you know, more than happy to, to answer any questions. If you, you know, There's a contact form. We always get back to people very quickly, so more than happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Thanks. Live from IRC. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.